Hello there, my name is Jo McNamara and I'm a lecturer here at Sheffield Hallam University. I've worked here now for six years and I'm the BSc course leader for year one and I'm also the admissions tutor. Um, I first became a therapy radiographer almost nine, ten years ago now um, and originally I wanted to be a physio or a medic um, and unfortunately I didn't get the grades. I wasn't quite sure about what I wanted to do um, but I came to an open day at the University of Sheffield Hallam and I decided that actually I might consider doing radiotherapy. I didn't know anything about it. I was very conscious that actually it was a profession I hadn't heard about previously um, and I kind of took a bit of a chance on the whole course. So I started, absolutely loved it. It's, it's a course where you can integrate all of the skills that you want to have with your patients, the caring, the empathy, but at the same time it's very technological advancing. So although it does have this reputation for being a girls kind of profession, actually that is just not the case anymore. Um, with the technology and the physics principles um, involved in radiotherapy, it really is a challenging and demanding course um, that also requires you to be empathetic and caring for patients who are going through a very difficult time in their, in their lives. Um, I got into radiotherapy, as I said, through kind of the physio route. Um, however, what many students do now um, is go to do GCSEs, usually very science-based, and then on to A-levels. Uh, we do require a science subject at A-level, and it's 280 UCAS points. Um, you can also go through the Access and the BTEC routes. Um, again, very science and health related courses um, required to gain access onto the radiotherapy and oncology course. And we also offer a postgraduate diploma course, so even if you do a degree previously, what you might then want to consider is going into radiotherapy. I think the one fantastic thing about radiotherapy at the moment is that the employability rate is very high and that's something that isn't the case for a lot of other professions at the moment. Um, because of the global um, shortage of therapy radiographers, we are finding all our students are managing to get jobs once they qualify and hopefully that will continue as the demand for radiotherapy services increase. Hello and welcome to the virtual learning environment at Sheffield Hallam University. We're very privileged to have this system here at the university where we can actually get students to practice treating their cancer patients using what we call a linear accelerator. So this is the equipment that we would typically use within the clinical radiotherapy department within the hospital. Not every hospital has a radiotherapy department, it's very specific and because of the safety precautions, because of the high ionising radiation that we use, it's not the kind of service that we would offer at every single hospital. So we find radiotherapy departments are often localised to cancer hospitals. Specifically in Sheffield, there's Western Park, which you may have heard of. So to be a therapy radiographer, you would have to obviously um, get your patient into the correct position to be able to treat the cancer that you are using. We have these very large linear accelerators, it doesn't look too big here, but it is a daunting piece of equipment that patients often find very surprising when they walk into a, a linear accelerator room. It does have a lot of functions to be able to actually target the radiation very specifically and it has a lot of safety, um, safety um, precautions as you would anticipate for such a large machine. So I'm just going to demonstrate a little bit about how the machine actually works. So again, we're very privileged to have this system whereby it actually makes the same noises that you would anticipate within the clinical setting. So this part of the machine is actually called the gantry. So as we rotate around the patient, we're just going to have a look inside the machine. If we dim the room lights and we turn on what we call the lasers, you can see these lasers here are produced from little laser lights on each side of the walls. Okay? And these are then corresponded onto the patient so that we can align with the lasers where the cancer and the tumour is actually targeted and where we would want to deliver this very high ionising radiation. So the x-rays themselves actually comes out of this section of the machine here. And this is called the head of the machine. And this section here is called the collimators. And they can actually rotate again around the patient to actually target where we are going to be treating. 
So what we would typically do is position the patient to where you would want to deliver the laser therapy. Then move the machine around that patient to get into the correct position. Okay. So for x-rays to actually be produced, you have um, a waveguide within this section here. So what would happen is you'd have a filament, a tungsten filament, which you may have heard of, and tungsten has a very high atomic number. And what we do is we heat that filament using thermionic emission to actually generate electrons. Once those electrons are then generated, they're what we call accelerated, hence the name linear accelerator. Those electrons are accelerated through the waveguide and then hit what we call a target. The target, again, is made from tungsten, so has, again, a very high atomic number. And once those electrons actually interact with the target, photons, or x-rays, are produced and are then collimated or um, configured so that they can actually deliver the radiotherapy in exactly the right size and shape that we need to, to fit the tumour and to treat the tumour as effectively and efficiently as possible. Unfortunately, with radiotherapy, the radiation can cause quite a lot of damage to normal tissues. So because of that, we have to be very careful of the tissue that we're treating and where we're actually directing the beam of radiotherapy through the patient and what organs it's coming into contact with. If we were treating this patient and we were treating, say, in the pelvis, and we had um, a cervical patient where we were treating the cervix, we'd have to be very careful that we weren't also treating bladder um, and therefore could cause a lot of fibrosis, which again in later years could cause quite a few um, bladder side effects, which is something that we would want to avoid very heavily. You could also consider that if we're treating the lung, the lung is um, obviously there to make sure that you can breathe, um, and unfortunately radiotherapy can actually cause what we call fibrosis, and because of that what can happen is the patient can have side effects long term after the radiotherapy has finished, uh, which could affect their quality of life. Therefore, radiotherapy has to be very targeted and very specific to where the tumour is and avoid any tissue um, which doesn't have any cancer associated with it. Okay, so I'm just going to look at some of the safety features of a linear accelerator. Um, a lot of the time, linear accelerators work perfectly normal. There isn't a huge risk to any of the therapy radiographers. I get some students who are quite concerned, you know, will working with radiation damage my fertility? Um, could I be compromised myself? Um, we actually receive less of a radiation dose than airline pilots, and it's extremely closely monitored by the National Health Service, if that's who you work for. Um, all of our students and all the therapy radiographers in the departments do have little um, radiation monitoring badges. So if you were to be exposed to any radiation, this will be recorded on your monitor and therefore evaluated um, and you'd then be able to see how much radiation you'd been exposed to. The only way that could happen is if you were to stay in the room um, whilst the treatment was actually being undertaken and that isn't something that we do. We do have to leave the room whilst the radiation is being delivered. We also have lots of safety features. Um, as you can see on the wall here, we have an emergency stop button. So if for any reason you needed to stop the machine um, very quickly, you could go into the room and press the emergency stop button, which would cut off the whole power to the linear accelerator. These are located on each of the walls in the treatment room. You can also see this button here located on the, on the treatment couch. That's also an emergency stop button. Um, we also have features that would allow us um, to ensure that patients aren't squished by the actual linear accelerator themselves. And as you can imagine, you can get um, to the stage in therapy radiography where you're treating lots of patients every day. And because the routine of setting up some patients can become quite monotonous, what you need to be aware of is that you're concentrating the whole time on where the machine is in relation to the patient. And therefore, we have what we call dead man's handles on all of the bars. 
So if I try to move the machine without compressing these, nothing would happen. And as you can see, if I press those and then move it, you can see the machine moving. Okay. Uh, we also have touch guards. So if for any reason anyone were to touch the head of the machine, again, the machine would stop and not be able to move. Okay. Or very safety conscious for the patient. If I rotate the machine round, you'll be able to see where the actual x-rays come out. Can you see this beam of light here shining onto the patient? This is what we actually use along with the lasers to set up the radiotherapy treatment. What we can actually do is treat the patient from all angles. So what I'm just going to show you is just how the machine can rotate. into the room and check they are okay. It's also worth noting that if you've got patients who are in pain or confused or very elderly um, and can't maintain this position, we might have to rethink um, whether radiotherapy is an appropriate treatment for them. So as you can see here, we have um, a slice of a CT scan. Now, for our patients in radiotherapy, we use CT and MRI scans to help target where the tumour is actually located. When we have targeted the tumour, we can then utilise the CT or the MRI or something called a CT-MRI fusion scan to actually pinpoint where the tumour is and the best plan for radiotherapy. And that means designing the different treatment fields. So where the radiation is going to be delivered, from which angle, um, and the size of the actual treatment beam itself. In the head of this machine, we do have some little lead fingers, and they're called multi-leaf col collimators. The multi-leaf collimators are basically uh, one centimetre thick pieces of lead, and they come in and out of the field um, to allow the radiation to be very specifically targeted to where the tumour is. So as you can see, this is a CT scan here of the patient that we had previously on the bed. We're also able to actually put on varying slices. So that's a transverse slice, and this is a coronal slice here of our patient. So you can see we have the heart, we have the lungs, we have the liver here. You can see we have the head of the femur, and you can just see that we have some vertebra here as well. So they're very clear images. Obviously, for our purposes in terms of teaching, um, we can get much better CT and MRI hard copies um, to actually view, but this is perfect for us to be able to practice um, visualising our anatomy in radiotherapy. So here we have a head and neck patient, and I'm just going to illustrate how the machine can actually move around this patient, uh, delivering the radiotherapy. So this is beam one, so this is from an anterior position. As you can see, this yellow here is illustrating um, the radiotherapy x-rays. Beam two, the machine rotates around the patient, and again delivers from this oblique angle. Here you can just see these lead MLCs, so the multi-leaf collimators, and they're actually specifically targeting the tumour itself and avoiding as much of the normal tissue as it possibly can do. 
going again then to the left lateral field. You can see much more clearly the multi-leaf collimators here, specifically making sure that any normal tissue is avoided. So within this patient, the targeted area that they would want to avoid specifically would be the cervical spine. Beam 4, from a very different angle here. And as you can see, we do treat through the treatment couch. So that requires the treatment couch to be made of carbon fibre so that the x-rays can actually penetrate through without being uh, attenuated in any way whatsoever. Beam 5, from another posterior oblique angle, again coming through the treatment couch. All head and neck patients, because the um, treatment is so very specific and because of a lot of the very... Um, very detailed organs that are in this area that would require a minimal amount of radiation as possible, what we also do is put patients into a head shell so that they can't actually move during the treatment. And then we can see from the right lateral here, again you can see the radiotherapy x-rays entering the patient here and exiting as well. And that's a really good uh, physics principle to bear in mind that actually, as you go into the patient, it does attenuate through the patient, but you do get exit dose as well. So that's something to bear in mind. You can also see how the x-rays flare out a little bit. This is known as the inverse square law, and that's something that you might want to consider when you look at the distance from the target to the actual patient that you're treating. And this is the final beam here, again, very specifically targeting the tumour and trying to avoid as much of the normal tissue as possible.